Hello friends, last time I promised I would do some videos uh, on security topics. Today I'm starting this series with a quick introduction to SQL injections. Uh, first we're going to look at uh, why they still happen, or one of the reasons. And uh, second we're going to look at how they work. And from there uh, we'll actually do a practical example. And at the end you should have a good understanding of what a SQL injection is. Why do SQL injections still happen? You would think with all the frameworks that we have and all the protection and all the education on it, it would not be this common anymore. But they still do. And why? Well, if you search the internet on uh, how to query a MySQL database uh, from a GET array, uh, for instance, you will find very difficult questions that people tend to answer quite simplistically. The answer is not incorrect it's just unsafe uh, in this example uh, the user shows uh, the guy asked the question how to implode a query string into a sql statement which is fine and it shows a very good uh, way of using it but the resulting query is unsafe everything that is passed in the query string will be imploded into this query and you will be susceptible to it SQL injection. So let's take a look at what a regular application query would look like. An example that we're going to exploit later on, uh, the user is able to get a list of users based on a user ID. So in that example, it would only be based on one uh, ID that the user inputs. And so the query would be something like uh, select star from user. So give me all the users that match the criteria where um, the user ID is in this case one. So I would imagine that this query in the code would look something like this, uh, select star from users where user ID equals and then a variable that contains the user ID. So if we take a look at our application, so this here is the damn vulnerable web application. It allows you to test various types of uh, attacks in a safe and controlled manner. Uh, we're looking at SQL injections right now. And here you see the user ID and uh, you add a user ID and you would get the data from that user, which is pretty much what we uh, have here. Select star from user. So this would be in the use table where user ID is limited to this input, which is right here. So adding one here uh, will just return the data for user one. If you add a two, and you would have a two uh, data for user two. But as an attacker, you don't want to just go through all the uh, IDs because maybe they're not. There's millions of them. Who knows? Um, but you want to convince the database to give you all the data that is there. And uh, so in this case, how would we attack this? The tech factor for uh, a SQL injection might look quite complex, but let's let's run through it. Um, in this case, a quote or one equals one dash dash and a pound sign. The pound sign is database specific and this is SQLite and the, uh, it is necessary here. This will result in the following actual SQL query. So select star from users where user ID equals quote, quote, so empty string, or one equals one, which is always true. And then the rest of the string, the uh, uh, query string, the original query string is commented out. And here at the uh, very end, there is the original quote, which used to be uh, right here. So this entire section here is something that we put into the system. And due to the variable being passed to the SQL query directly, we now have created a completely new SQL statement. So if we add this or we input this into our application, let's see what happens. So we have the quote or one is one dash dash pound sign. And now we get everything that is in this user database. So we have the uh, ID, which is our input string. So you see that the application here just puts whatever the user puts in it. But we have all the records that are part of the 
database. So now we went from just having a one record being returned, we tricked the application into actually returning more and more rows. So this is the basic way SQL injections work. You can do a lot more with it, of course. You can go and query more uh, tables and, and even get usernames and passwords. But we'll look at that next time. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you liked the video. It uh, encourages me to make more uh, on this topic. The next video, uh, we'll take a look at how to actually get data from other tables using a vulnerability like this. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.